Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you want to be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you want to be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just want to be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals, but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do want to do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college level course, it's better than a college level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course. Thank you for watching this and for your support. And thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon.
Dear friends, my dear, dear friends, is this working? My God. I've spent damn near two days transferring everything over to my new PC, rebuilding the stream setup, redoing the settings. Can you hear me? I got everything all over the place in new places. What is up? What is up? Put my phone on silent. Get this out of my way. Um, so here we are. Okay, so I sound, I sound good? Do I sound good? Are the audio levels good? How's the noise? Is the new piece, are the new PC's fans too noticeable? Let's see, what do I, hold on one sec. What the hell do I have here? This pad of paper is falling apart. We should be in 4K now again too with these new encoders. We've moved beyond 1080p. We've moved beyond even 1440p. We are in 4K. I don't know what I'm gonna draw today. I really just needed to test the stream setup. So bear with me, everybody, if uh, this whole thing just turns off at random, or if there's weird glitches and stuff like that. I did a couple private test streams to test, but this will be the first actual stream. Are you telling me you got a new PC but haven't set fan curves? I did. This is, this is just the most silent setting. There's only so quiet they'll get without being off. <laughs> Slight PC fan noise is good. So some people can hear it, some people can't. So that probably means it's right at the edge of being um, tolerable. Mark says, why is the paper all red, green, and blue? Yeah, the RGBs are currently off because I reset them, but they're going off. They won't be on for long. I just put a new cartridge in this pen, so let's get the ink to flow. I don't know if I want to sketch in here or in my sketchbook. I hope I didn't let ink dry on this. This pen is pretty good about it. I've never had a problem. The ink always flows. It's pretty minor, like quiet night, white noise machine in the background. All right. I could mess with the denoise a bit too, but I don't want it to affect my voice too much. I got that new NVIDIA denoising. Let's see. What if I take it up to, I'm just gonna pump it up to 40%. Does this change anything about the fans? And does my voice sound the same? Did you upgrade camera too? Nope. Same drawing cam, but um, it does look um, like I'm getting less frame drops on it. Um, it's smoother, it seems, and I think that's because uh, 
I had a pretty limited selection of high-speed USB ports on my old computer. It's in a very high-speed one now, so if that feels different, it's got to be that. It made it louder. Impossible. It definitely did not. It's just that you're looking for it now. <laughs> definitely did not make it louder. Steven, isn't streaming this much overexposure? Where'd you learn that word? Cool word. Oh boy, did I let too much ink dry on this, on my fountain pen? I might not be able to use this right now. Hold on, let me check it. All right, I'm gonna put it back down to 30% just because it really didn't seem to make a difference for anybody. And I'd rather just veer on the safe side of my voice not sounding weirdly compressed. But look, there's gonna be, there's going to be tests needing to be run. Spent the two, past two days just reinstalling everything, doing all my plugins, setting everything up. Oh, here comes the ink. I can feel it coming. Something's wrong here, folks. I think I'm gonna have to draw with something else and do a little surgery on the fountain pen later today. Usually when I leave it with an empty cartridge, you know, there's no ink left in it, so it doesn't dry. Oh, well, it's slowly coming, but I know it's smoother than that. Let me check my focus here. Zoom in. Whoops. I was recording that whole time too. That's good. I needed that to test something anyway. Steve just dip the pen in water and blot it. Uh, that has not gotten good results when I've tried it in the past. Uh, it's surprisingly hard to get the wetness off the tip, pause. And then it just kinda, you need to like wait a really long time for it to dry out. It never quite works the way you want. It thins the ink too readily and then the ink gets really transparent for a long time. I'm not gonna try to fix this on stream. I'm gonna pick something else. We'll just draw in pencil. And let's test how the uh, pencil sharpener sounds. Mr. Zapata, don't mean to troubleshoot with you, but every time I glaze a drawing, it only produces a black page with weird outline of the drawing. Has that happened to you? That has not happened to me. Um, maybe I'll be able to help with troubleshooting glaze more soon because um, now that I've switched to PC, I'm gonna do local glazing so that I have more control. So um, hopefully if I, uh, hopefully if I, um, 
Well, hopefully I don't get those errors, but if I do, hopefully I'll be able to help out. I'll figure them out and assist. Where's my mouse? What happened to my mouse? I have lost my mouse. Mouse, please. Mouse, return to us. What's going on here? Okay. My mouse is plugged in. Sorry, everybody. I'm sure it's going to take a while before I... Okay, my mouse is frozen. Why would that be? Does my tablet work? Tablet works. Mouse is frozen. Let me unplug and replug it. Okay, that did it. And let me move my chat over yonder. Actually, that makes it quite small. I'm gonna put you guys back over. Hmm. And my mouse is frozen again. Something's clearly wrong there. Hopefully that doesn't become an ongoing problem. Then again, I'm using the USB mouse that came with this, so. I'm sure I will switch to one of my Bluetooth mice at some point just because I don't like the wire. So hopefully that will fix this problem if it is a problem. All right. Well, anyway, guys, yeah, new stream, new tech, new setup, new settings. So if you notice anything, if anything's very annoying, if something gets loud, um, if we all notice something like my stream crashing or my bitrate plunging or something like that, bear with me and let me know. Um, what else can I say? Oh, let me put my, uh, da -da -da. let me put the discount sticker up. I extended the sale until December 4th. Just because when uh, beginning of a month and end of a week align, that's usually when people get paid. So I just wanted to jive with that. So again, 10% off all versions of Form for Imagination. The code is up there. Are we back? I'm back. All right. I mean, I I I don't know what um. I don't know. I mean, my bit rate just plunged, and I ran several speed tests, and my internet was great. You know, low latency. My full numbers up and down. Uh, I have plenty of overhead on my upload speed, on my upload bit rate. I don't know. It might be um. Since my internet seemed fine, uh, if that keeps happening, I'm using the newest encoder for YouTube, AV1. So might be because it's new, maybe it's unreliable, not, might need to switch to a different encoder if it keeps happening. Let me see if this made a, let me satisfy my own curiosity here. I wanna see if this made a new stream. It should have, or else if, but you guys are all, but you guys are still here, so what goes on? Let's see how many lives are sitting here right now. Huh, it looks like it's the same one. I don't know how the hell that would work, but. Um,
Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. This will take a while to figure out. All right, well, while I'm here, since I know that I'm at risk of cutting out, let me try to answer some questions. So that's not just a, tr a tech troubleshooting stream. Got an email about all the good work Concept Art Association is doing in Washington, D.C., meeting with legislators. They're doing a good job. I feel lucky to be involved with that. Um, ooh, I should update the... Um, there's a link to the GoFundMe for the Concept Art Association stuff, but they made a new GoFundMe instead of updating the old one. So let me get that. Okay. I have added it. So the stream description is updated to have the new link to the new year two GoFundMe. And if you have any questions about that, if you're curious about helping with the fight, uh, Concept Art Association is completely transparent about where all the money goes. So you can read there description on that page to see where the money goes. And uh, they're just fully brutally honest, so you can see that the vast majority of all the money goes to the full-time DC lobbyist to get them in the room and to arrange the meetings and to um, pull their connections to help get into the room and to do events and things like that. So just something to pursue if you're interested. I'm gonna close deck. All right, I should have something on screen. I'll just put that there while ooh, my colors are off. There we go. Why are my colors off? I'm on vivid. I don't know what that's about. All right, I saw another question up here. Now I realize now I probably should have my microphone on the other side of my computer since I moved my second monitor. This is why you gotta run it live. You don't think about these things sometimes until you're actually in it. So let me, I'm not gonna, I don't think, I think I would need to change the setup considerably to get over there. So I'm just going to, for now, just get it closer to me. Do you guys have any idea how much I appreciate you for tolerating me while I struggle to redo my whole setup? So now, well, at least now it's closer and I'm not peeking, right? No, no. Um, maybe I could come down a little bit. Testing, testing, still a little loud. Testing, testing, testing very close to my head now, if I'm drawing like this. All right, so this way, yeah, this is a little better for when I am, when I'm looking at chat and talking. Okay, now where is that question? I'm sweat sweating from doing tech support live on stream. Tech support for myself. Yo, Steven, I drew you when you froze. May I share you the link so you can see it? Yeah, send me an email or if you're in the Discord, DM it to me on Discord. Sorry for disappearing, folks. Thanks for sticking around. I can't promise it won't happen again. All right, Terrace says, Hi, Stephen. I liked your advice on making the picture, but how does that play into doing commissions? What mindset should I have when doing impersonal work that will be held up to certain standards? It's just a different game, completely. I mean, once you've entered the professional side of things where you are running your creativity through or against or with someone else's creativity, it's very different concerns. 
I don't know, there's nothing else. What else could I say? You know what I mean? The, the making the picture thing is really a way to structure the process that you go through when you're learning on your own. Once you're taking commissions, and I say this all the time, it's like once other people's money are involved, you should be a consummate professional, right? Some people who are paying you, really good clients, for example, um, they will want you, they will want to give you a lot of freedom and they will want you to surprise them with things that they didn't expect. But it's usually like bigger clients that do that because they're not insecure. They're confident, they're confident in themselves, they're confident in you as a professional, they themselves are professionals, you know, they're not amateurs. So um, weirdly enough, it's usually the bigger, more expensive clients that are uh, willing to give you that kind of freedom. And it's smaller, more individual clients who tend to resist that. Um, and when you're in those situations, well, you know, you're gonna work to get out of them. But yeah, smaller clients, like one-on-one -on -one things, a lot of them are cool too, but it, it tends to be that that's where the insecurity crops up and they'll try to control you more and they're not really looking for your creativity. They just want you to draw the cat girl exactly the way that they imagined the cat girl. Um, and yeah, they paid you, they're paying you, you took the job. So if they're that kind of person, my usual advice is shut up and get the work done. Just, you know, if it's making you miserable, the misery will be over the quicker you get the work done. So just do it, you know, and uh, work to fix this problem, not on this job, but in the next job, in how you negotiate for the next job and things like that. These creatures are sick, dude. When did you draw that? I drew these on a stream a while ago, but I think it was a Patreon stream. Probably a, one of the people in chat would remember better than I do, actually. I don't remember if I did this on a public stream or if I did this on a Patreon stream. I wanna say a Patreon stream. How does one go from being a poor drawer to an okay one? Are there certain rules of thumb everyone should start with? The big difference, okay, I, sh I have to be clear, the big difference in my opinion, between a strong drafts person and a weak one is understanding of form, is the, the very solid conception of things as three-dimensional structures that sit in space. That for me is the big difference. You gotta get away from just fiddling with 2D shapes that are flat on the paper and flat in your mind. Public, it was on the YouTube stream. Yes, it was a while ago. It was months ago at this point, I think. Cat girls mentioned, confirmed cat girls mentioned. My hair touches the microphone. My God, can you hear this? There's no winning. <laughs> I see Steve got himself some Zoomer curls. I hate to say it, I really do. This is an ugly thing to say, but I had him, I had him before it was cool. The Zoomers have not seen anything like what I had in high school. My God, my God. 
Please dye broccoli hair for uh, green for full effect. That's a pretty good idea for a, a Halloween costume. You can hear that? That's funny. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I might have to... I'm gonna have to see if my microphone cable would reach if I put the mic on the other side of my desk. Or I could just switch the screen position. I could put this screen over there. But then I either have to put my PC on the ground or I, I don't think it could go on the other side of the desk unless I had a much longer cable for my surge protector because there's only a couple plugs in this room. You know, it's uh, setting everything up. It's just, it's all these little trade-offs, you know? It's, if this goes there, then I can't do this. I can do this. I haven't drawn in pencil in a little while. Feels nice. I'm just doing little doodles because in the back of my head, I'm just waiting for a stream to crash again. <laughs> I'm just expecting this to become a full troubleshooting stream at this point. If anyone has any questions, let me know. I wanted to ask for advice. I just graduated last September and ever since I've been searching for art related jobs and starting commissions but neither of them worked out for me at the moment. Now I'm tempted to work a nine to five job instead so I can remove the pressure of being jobless and earn some income. Or should I keep searching for an art job slash commissions? I don't think there's anything wrong with, getting an art job is hard. It absolutely is, especially if you're looking for something that's stable. I mean, it's hard enough to get, get it's hard enough to get gigs. Something really stable like a studio position is even harder. So I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a normal job, which I would just call, you know, a job, um, while you try to figure things out. I don't want to test my neighbor's patience, so I'm sorry, I have to go grab that dog. Hey, gray one, gray one. No, they're usually more quiet if I keep them in here with me. Fanny, come here. Stay there. Stay. Fanny, come. They won't chill in here with me unless their beds are in here. I wanted to know how you capture your own likeness that you can draw yourself from imagination. Um, I, it's just like anything else. You need to draw yourself a lot. I have done millions of self-portraits of myself, literally millions. I have discarded millions of complete self-portraits of myself in order to be able to capture my beautiful essence. Mm. 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 
when I used to work in the studio, I would draw these on little post-it notes and leave them around the office. So that people would find them like inside the, uh, a kitchen cabinet drawer or something like that. Ahmed has seen me draw about a billion of these. <laughs> and that's pretty standard. I used to do some, you know, I'd have like my mouth flying around and wrapping around my head and stuff like that. If you put, if you put yourself through con real contortions, like really, really beat up your face, you will eventually figure out what is sort of like the caricature core of your appearance. What's the weirdest fan interaction you've had? Mm, yeah, every now and then you get some crazies in chat, but the thing about me is that I, I can always, people don't know how crazy I am. So every crazy person, when they come in, I, I just have way more endurance than them. I, um, I can out crazy them. You know, they'll, I know, I know what they're like. I'm like, they'll be around for a couple of weeks and then they just realize that they can't break me and they bail, they get bored. Um, yeah, I can out endurance the crazies. So uh, it really doesn't get that bad. Really, all I've really had is really nice fan interactions, ex especially at um, Lightbox. I, um, I won't go into the personal details there, but I had some very emotional and touching interactions with people that was very nice. It was very um, rejuvenating for sure. Testing, 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 testing. I'm trying to angle it so my hair doesn't hit it. Wow, those teeth are just a thing. Come on, accurate. Look. No, it's right. Look. Because it's flip. Ah. Ah. You know, very accurate, highly accurate. I really wish I had my fountain pen. That's what I felt like drawing with today. I know I've got another one. I have another one in my drawers, but it doesn't have ink in it. And I'll just use a felt tip pen, but it's not the same. What are your dreams like? Very uninteresting. I have very uninteresting dreams. People think maybe because of the stuff I draw that my dreams are wild. They are not. I have the same, you know, I forgot to go to a class for a whole semester anxiety dreams that everybody else has. That's it. So a new problem that I'm having is that my damn mouse keeps freezing. I have to unplug it, replug it. And that was never happening while I was just using the PC. It only seems to be happening now that I'm streaming.
Next new thing I gotta get. New lights. These cheap soft boxes that I have give off like a, an annoying electronic hiss when they're at medium brightness and above. That sounds like the kind of thing where it's like, if you want quiet soft boxes, you've probably got to jump to like a premium version that's really expensive. That's what my gut tells me. Is the mouse and camera on same USB hub? I don't think so, but I don't know. I mean, the camera's plugged into the back IO ports and my mouse is plugged into the front IO ports. So I take it that would mean they're on different USB hubs. Drivers, could be that. I don't think I've installed any drivers for this mouse. Just doing it plug and play. But also didn't, you know, the packaging didn't say to install any drivers or anything like that. It didn't give a website. I don't freaking. know. It's also just a cheap piece of crap freebie, so. I should probably just bite the bullet and uh, switch my magic mouse over or get a new Bluetooth mouse. Do you believe that if, for example, someone wants to make a piece of art which should represent negative emotions, should they do it while they are in a bad mood or neutral with a reflection of that? Um, I think there's just a practical limit there that it would be very difficult to maintain the negative emotion for the amount of time necessary to complete the piece. So uh, I'm not closed off to the idea that it would be useful to design the picture or start it in a negative mind state. Um, but I think it's not necessary to maintain that negativity while you work on it. I think neutral is fine or happy. You know, I do, I do a lot of drawings that most people, if they were pressed, they'd probably say they represent something negative. They're like very, you know, just sort of dark or weird or things like that. But um, I basically never am in, um, like a dark or negative mood when I'm working on them. I'm, um, you know, listening to Ariana, Ariana Grande and blindingly happy most of the time while I work on them. And I don't think that that um, affects the image. If I was, you know, pissed or sad, uh, it would probably only make it worse. I'll be right back. I'm going to get my sketchbook. I don't want to draw on this.
sorry, but you're in dog prison today. You just bark too much. Now stay in here with me in dog prison. There is a prison for dogs, and I will take you there. Are you a glass half empty, Stephen, or half full? I'm a, there is no glass, Stephen. Baby, baby, you try to find hey, 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 a little time, and I'll make you happy. I'll be home. I'll be beside the phone waiting for you. Boo, boo. I'm forever a proponent of the Logitech G502. Gamercraft aside, I've never used a mouse that fits my hand better. I don't remember that. Can't do much worse than the magic mouse for ergonomics though. Affirmative. I think uh, I'm a, I'm a, I like Apple products. Um, I'm sad to depart from Mac OS, <laughs> but um, I have to admit to me, as, mu as much as I'm a little bit of an Apple fanboy, I was always like, the Magic Mouse is stupid. <laughs> this is a dumb thing. I can't believe they never fixed the fact that it charges from the bottom. I wondered for a long time, like, is that, a, is that like a joke? Is the idea that when it's upside down and the wire is plugged into it, it looks like a dead mouse? Is that like a very meta design joke? But that ain't Apple. They're, they don't do that with anything else, you know? it's. It's kind of a funny coincidence. I have to think it's a coincidence, but yeah, terrible design, terrible design. Yeah, I'll probably get a new mouse because um, I might use the magic mouse if this problem keeps going, but um, the, um, the other thing is I don't, I don't think on Windows I get a middle, the middle scrolling functions or anything like that with the magic mouse and that's not good. I want a middle mouse button and all that. Can I go crazy and compare myself to others? I don't know what you mean by that. I just don't know what you mean by that. Hey Chet, how are you doing? Everybody go check out Chet Zars YouTube and his excellent podcast, the Dark Art Society podcast, which to this day is my favorite um, interview I've ever done on AI. I wound up talking to a lot of people about AI both on podcasts, artists, I've been on NPR, BBC One, um, did a TED Talk, stuff like that. Um, still, I, I really like my interview with Chet. You know, we got a lot of time to talk about it there. And my first interview with Chet um, is my favorite interview or favorite talk I've ever given, um, ever, about my career or anything like that. We got to go into the full depth and we got to get, and we got to get really weird at the end, which is uh, rare, it's rare to get to get all the way down to it. How is the AI battle going? Is there a light? Um, things get complicated, but um, yeah, I think there is a light. I mean, still I say, um, I think there is a way that we come out on top here, but it's not gonna be easy. You know? Do your dreams have dialogue or is it just pictures? People talk in my dreams, I think. Not a lot, but I feel like I could definitely remember some dreams with dialogue. Normally my dreams are like, um, a lot of vast spaces and things like that.
Thanks for all the mice recommendations. People seem to like Logitech mice. Maybe that would be the way to go. I use their, uh, my face cam is a Logitech Brio. Excellent little webcam. It was actually my drawing cam for a long time, pre-YouTube, back when I streamed on Twitch. If I remember correctly, for a while there, I was using the, the Brio as my drawing cam. It gets the job done. If you do really graphic stuff like ink or something like that, or paints, I think it would definitely get the job done. I eventually decided to upgrade because, uh, you know, I do pencil drawings and I just really crave clarity on all the little hatches and everything like that. I'm glad stream has not crashed again. I don't know why we got that first crash. Seems stable now. Everything's smooth for everybody? Even at 4K and all this? I'm a little too zoomed in there on my checker, yeah. Sometimes I can't actually check the focus if I'm too zoomed in there. All right. Smooth as six, smooth as silk, smooth as hell, yes. If we can actually not crash while running like this, this is great, you know? I'd be very happy to be back to streaming at 4K because uh, that's just how I like to show the pencil drawings. Otherwise things get, it's a shame that things get run together too much. And I'll, I'll try to push the bit rate a little more on the next stream. I wonder if that had something to do with the crash, but I had plenty of overhead on the bit rate still. I was trying to stream at 25 and I have 40 up, so I'll try 25 again next time. Have you gone back to drinking coffee? This is tea, delicious tea. If you could make a video game, what genre would it be? I am... I would probably, I don't know much about this genre. I've seen a few in, installations, but I would, I would probably try to make some psychedelic experiential thing. Uh, I, I, I don't really have much interest in making a video game, but if I had to, I'd try to do something very, very odd. That's not the kind of stuff I play. It's just the kind of thing I think I would make, you know? I'm not like, I, I can't imagine sitting there and trying to like design a fighting system or something like that. How do I draw even if I'm incredibly bored? Just start drawing. I mean, you tend to find that if you just stick with it for like five or 10 minutes, um, you'll feel less bored. Where the hell is my needed eraser? I need my needed eraser. <laughs> Needed a racer, come to me. It's probably in my third pencil case. of my little ink bottle. You need to see a game called Hylix 2. I haven't heard of it. Wait a minute, Mike. 
right into the right places, getting a little complicated. Uh, I'll mess with that after the stream. Speaking of dreams, I just had a lucid one the other day, tried to summon my shadow self and was confronted by a mutant house cat in flaming armor. My subconscious is punking me, I think. That's awesome. See, I never have dreams like that. Low key jealous right here. If anyone is joining new and is wondering what the AI predictions I mentioned in the title are, that is a reference to um, Stability AI's Ahmad Mustaki announcing that they're doing subscriptions for commercial use for stable diffusion, and that if you make a certain amount of rev revenue, they're going to start taking a cut, kind of like, which is it, Unreal Engine or Unity that has that model? More things come to pass. I did predict that would happen in my AI video, The End of Art. I mean, these are huge companies with tremendous valuations and Silicon Valley hype. You think they're going to stay free and open source forever? Come on. Come on. You think they're going to let you have your favorite toy for free forever? Please. Steven, have you considered doing a watercolor video or painting traditionally? If you look through the past streams, there's uh, a few streams of, um, of me doing watercolor. Nice day to draw today, folks. I feel good about being sitting here with you all. I'm going to try to not commit completely to this drawing too much. I should do some doodling, I think, because I haven't drawn in a bit. Last stream I did was a total meme stream. Freaks telling me what to draw. Mostly variations on feet. It's not right practice. It's not even right behavior. It's not right view. It's definitely not right speech, not right intention. Mm. Might be right concentration. <laughs> if I'm doing it, it just might be right concentration. Just doodle and warm up for a while. Explore. Not warm up, but just like do a variety of things, see what comes out, see what my unconscious is interested in lately. I think the reason my dreams are not visually interesting is because I spend all day letting my unconscious dump the, the visuals that are building up inside.
Stephen, can you give me a prompt? My head is empty. Um, uh, now my head's empty. <laughs> Maybe someone in chat can give you a good prompt. I think I'm philosophically opposed from giving people prompts for things to draw. And that, uh, when I try to think of one, my brain short circuits the program. Like, do not control people's creativity that way. You know, why don't we, instead of a prompt, I would say address the, the core of the issue. Why don't you, um, maybe instead of trying to hammer it out through drawing, why don't you write some things instead? Why don't you actually open up a notepad and switch to the other part of your brain and write your own prompts instead of just hoping something unique comes out in the drawing? I think for a lot of people that'll, um, switching the part of the brain they're using like that will kind of put them into art director mode and you will come up with something interesting. I also haven't been drawing as much over the past couple days because I was, uh, speaking of writing, doing repairs to my project that I'm doing with my friend Joe. Was rewriting some story beats, doing some brutal cuts of huge amounts of content, repairing the holes that that made, things like that. Oh, and that's, uh, there's Joe right there. Can you mention here, like on Twitch? I have no idea. Birdman is shredded, as every Birdman should be. Hark, a shredded and buff vulture man. Run, children, run. The shredded bird men will get you. Their serratus so defined. Didn't skip leg day. Thick, powerful quads. The hamstrings, I, I didn't even know they could get that defined. And the glutes, the glutes, children, they'll be the last thing you see before you're carried away on strong wings. Grandpa, are you, are you okay? Silence, children. I'm thinking of ripped bird men and how scary they are. I know you don't like those voices, Fanny. I know. I'll stop. Every time I do a weird voice, my dog jumps up on the table and she's like, I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to sleep. Elden Ring DLC 60 FPS? Don't, why'd you say that? Did they... Did they release more information on, on the DLC? Don't just say that for no reason. Do not say that. Do you have a favorite TV show? Uh, season one of True Detective, for sure. I think season one of True Detective is the best eight hour movie ever. <laughs> That's what I think. I've had days where I just treated it that way. I watched the whole season start to finish in one day. I did that more than once back in college as an all day drawing companion.
The dogs are starting to get fussy. They want to go sleep on the bed. They don't like being trapped in here with me. Is it downhill after first season? I think so, but I, I, I never actually finished the second season, so I can't, um, I couldn't get through like episode three. So I actually can't tell you, maybe it gets better, you know? Oh, shredded bird man, don't come through my window late at night as I sleep and fly me away. I said, don't do that, shredded bird man. Please keep that sharp beak away from me, far, far away. Birdman, Birdman, let me be. Keep that sharp beak far from me. <laughs> Hey, Steven, you should watch Scavenger's Rain. Animation is Mobius style. That sounds familiar. I'll check that out. Mobius Moebius Moebius Did you see that horrible King Kong game they put out? No Drink Water says following your advice to do 50% of my own work I end up art too similar to a particular artist. I feel I'm stealing their stage I don't want to become like Boris Vallejo a couple things about that you wish you could upstage Boris Vallejo. <laughs> I, I, I need the, the, I, in the intermediate and beginning stage, the common fear that an artist, that artists have, all, all of us that we go through, where we're like, oh, I look too much like Frazetta. Ooh, I look too much like Boris Vallejo. Let me be honest with you. You fucking wish. You do not 
look like them. All right. Uh, and the, the idea that you look like a cheap ripoff or something like that is, uh, that is an unavoidable stage for just about everybody. I went through my period where I was a cheap, cheap ripoff of Wesper, Marko Djurjevic. Um, there is no avoiding that. There simply is no avoiding that. Everybody goes through it. So if you think that you can skill drill your way around that, that's not what happens. You will think you're doing that and then you'll waste 10 years and you'll go try to do your own creative work. And then the being a cheap, cheap ripoff stage will begin. So you could have been moving through it for all of those 10 years or whatever that you were gonna spend drilling skills. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. Work through it now, you know? Our taste is so deceptive. You're like, oh, Boris Vallejo, oh, it looks too muscular. It's too rendered. Oh, Frizzette is better. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the level of being a, cr a, cr a critic, yeah, sure, that's true. Yeah, okay. Maybe he didn't appease exactly what you wish you looked like or you have this analog, you know, oh, Frazetta did these things better. On the level of a cr critic, yeah, sure, those evaluations are true. As an artist, you would be lucky to paint like Boris Vallejo. That's, that's the unfortunate truth of taste. Same thing with Thomas Kincaid. Look up, look up Thomas Kincaid's plain air paintings. Gaze ye upon his work and despair. Good luck. Oh, you think Thomas Kincaid sucks? Oh, it's so kitsch. Oh, all right, all right. Let's see you pull off one Thomas Kincaid plein air study. He was great. He was a genuinely good painter. You have no, you're just, you arrogant, mewling little quims. Horrible, horrible. If, you're, if your work is winding up similar to theirs, all that should mean is that you have a lot to learn from them. So don't worry about ups, upstaging them. You think you can ups, you think if you do too much work like that, people are gonna like find your work instead of Boris Vallejo's when they search for, you know, muscular fantasy or something like that? Like dog, no, <laughs> no, good luck. You would, you would be lucky to become infamous. It's not, it's not, you, you couldn't draw embarrassingly bad enough to be popular. So shut up and do your drawings. A anything that comes your way in art is lucky and you should thank your lucky stars that you get to experience it.
Not disrespecting Boris, I am afraid of people mentioning your art look reminds me of theirs. It hurts me, I don't know why. It's supposed to be a compliment, but I don't feel it like that somehow. That's just the artist ego getting in. We all have that. I mean, look, look at my chat. I sit here on stream hours and hours and a lot of people, I get messages all the time on here. They're like, oh, that character reminds me of this. Oh, that reminds me of that. Is that this? Is this that? Oh, you draw like this person. It's easy to get bent out of shape about that when that's the only message that you're getting from that person. It's just artistic ego. You want to be perceived as something that you're not, which is to say some utterly unique artistic visionary, right? Which is just a made up narrative that isn't true. Uh, it's just an easy thing for your ego to cling to. Um, it's not rude when people say that. All that is actually happening in my experience when I've dug down on stuff like that is just that, you know, it, People who don't have our obsessive amount of knowledge about art and how artists want to be treated and what the artistic mindset is like and this variety of artistic expressions and art history and all of that, people with not all that, they don't know how else to interface with somebody's art than to compare it to something. Especially if you're doing something like I'm doing here, which is just kind of random, like I'm not, presenting this as a thing. I'm not saying this is a ripped Birdaman drawing that I'm doing for my board game that's gonna be about this, or this is fan art of that. I've said nothing about this piece. So the interaction that a person would have with it is structureless, right? They don't know what my intent is, anything. And the easiest way for people to do something, to reach out, to try to connect with the artist and with the work is to say, hey, it kind of reminds me about this. When you look at it from that angle, it's a nice thing. It's nice when people say, oh, it reminds me of Dark Souls or something like that. Like that's just them. They could have said nothing. It would have been much easier to say nothing, right? So that's actually just them grasping for some way to express that they feel a connection with the work, right? And yeah, maybe they didn't say it the way you wish they did, but that is actually a truly nice thing. And I don't think that you should I don't think anyone should get bent out of shape about it. You should kind of appreciate that that's even possible at all, you know? It's like we tend to develop this assumption that um, non-artists should sort of have as nuanced an experience of art as us just because it's, it's, the wa it's the water we swim in, right? We have such an intimate connection to it. As you get older, you share more work and things like that, you will find that's crazy. That's just a crazy thing to assume people have. I mean, you know, we have a nuanced association because we've been thinking about it forever. We've been researching art forever. We've been looking at artists forever. It's like most people are not going to have, what matters is that they have some core care about it at all. That's already enough. But that nuanced conversation is like, you know, you have that with other artists, not with people in general. Why do you talk like Terrence McKenna? See, a compliment. <laughs> My brain, when I read that, my brain immediately went like, well, why compare me to Terrence McKenna? And then I was like, they're connecting with the vigor behind the speech. If I'm lucky, some amount of the eloquence, some would say grandiloquence, <laughs> the unfortunate grandiloquence of the way that I speak, it's a compliment. It's not actually a negative thing. And I do think that 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 probably was the intention of Frankenstein ASMR's message to make that connection.
All right, we have been going for over an hour here. How, how is stream? Still smooth? Looks good? Looks clear? I feel like my stream is always, um, it looks great or it has completely crashed. <laughs> it's like there's no in between. It's one or the other. Stream is good, perfect, all right. Okay, that's a good sign an hour in. Next stream upgrade is before summer. I'm gonna buy the quietest air conditioner on the market. <laughs> That's the next big stream upgrade because I got an AC slot that is unfortunately very close in this room and uh, it's an old one in there. Um, it's, very, uh, it's very audible and unfortunately, you know, I didn't know when I picked this as the studio room, but damn, this studio room gets hot, really hot. The sun shines directly on it all morning and um, my neighbor control, my downstairs neighbor controls the heat and he likes to keep this place warm all the time. So even in winter, and my studio is above a part of his house that he's always got hot. So the air rises, it's just like, it's always warm in here. It's like, even on days where it's freezing here in New York, um, this studio room, and I turn the radiator off in here. I have it off so that it doesn't make noise. Even on freezing days, I come in here first thing in the morning, it's like freaking 70 degrees. Can barely hear the AC, it's not on. What you hear right now is just my CPU fans. So the, the AC is covered right now because it's winter. But um, yeah, next stream upgrade is definitely the most silent AC on the market before summer hits. <laughs> I was dying this summer on streams, trying to, um, I would turn the AC on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Y'all remember. I mean, damn, I'm, it's 49 degrees here today in New York and I'm sweating right now. Drinkwater says, okay, but I wanted to also ask, how much would be too much about taking ideas from other artists? Um, well, this is a very nuanced conversation. So on the ground floor level, there's no other way to discuss this but the nuanced way. Uh, and these are just my beliefs, right? On the ground floor level, art is structuralist. Right? I mean, there's nothing right or wrong done in art. And, and I mean that really far out, right? Like tracing and things like that, I don't think is, there's no ground floor objective that's morally wrong there, right? Art is just like this weird emergent phenomenon. Um, but we have, everything that does matter winds up being basically societally enforced good form and the rare occasions where copyright problems overlap, legal stuff, right? Which is actually pretty limited and pretty rare direct overlap um, in the real world. Um, so within these socially constructed good form, bad form, tracing another artist's work is definitely a no-go. <laughs> that doesn't work for anybody. It's bad for your progress, it's bad for your business, it's bad for their business, and if you find out, if people find out, you're screwed, right? It's, ne it's never worth doing. Um, I don't think taking compositions is a good idea. Taking compositions is very inhibiting for your progress for more advanced reasons. Um, nobody owns a composition. They couldn't, you know, you, you can accidentally stumble on, um, with how many images are out there in the world, you can accidentally stumble on somebody else arriving at a similar composition. You know, a tree on the left, person in the foreground, building on the right, things like that. Um, but I think that that's the way it should happen. You should 
sort of organically, freely, unconsciously, um, if you're gonna wind up getting compositions very similar to someone that you're heavily influenced by, it should happen naturally. And you should always be investigating it. You should always be, every time that happens, basically by definition, it's because you are not being as thoughtful as you could be about how you are composing your pictures, right? We could all always be um, much more thoughtful. So I would always prioritize that, trying to analyze um, what, why you're making the ground floor decisions about how your pictures are arranged. Um, like this guy on the right here, why is he cut off under the knees? Why is he per presented on this lens where he's rather flat on the page instead of being heavily foreshortened with a lot of perspective? Um, should it be in more extreme perspective? Should it be seen from the back? Why do I start with pencil? Why do I ink afterwards? Why don't I start with ink? Could I blend the ink and the pencil? Like be questioning everything about the art because it's in the questions that you arrive at what is going to make your work uniquely you. I don't know, I hope there's something useful in there. Content, genre stuff, like I think that's totally fine to just work within the modalities presented by other artists, right? Like there's nothing wrong with, you know, just unabashedly owning that you do sci-fi and things like that. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Frankenstein says, because you don't dr like drawing feet. I actually really like drawing feet. I think feet are great. They're, ba they're, they're almost an abstraction especially when you get into the anatomy of them. I actually really like drawing feet. I usually don't get to them in something on my sketchbook because the paper is just too small. You know, I have to lose a lot of scale on the details um, if I fit him all the way down to the feet down there. What did you do to be able to draw the face from imagination? Understood the foundations of form, as to say how basic shapes sit in space, which most people bin as perspective, but I even think perspective is kind of um, like the actual rules of perspective, like setting up vanishing points and things like that. I think that's a layer above. I think there's an even more basic exploration of just how things occlude, how things overlap. Um, just the, it's almost so foundational that it's difficult to express. It's like, just how much does one form protrude versus another? That actually is a, a perspective question and a form question that beginners really have to spend a long time understanding. You know, they don't, they don't really have a solid conception of like, if we look at the side of the face, like does the brow plane stick out more like this? So this is brow, this is cheek plane, right? Just does the brow stick out more than the cheek plane on this figure? How much more? What's the difference, right? What's the ratio from there to there to there? Or on this, or on this face, does the brow stick out less than the cheek plane? So there's the brow box. There's the cheek box. And then how are you going to honor that, depending what perspective you're in? A three-quarter front view, tilted up, tilted down. These very basic foundational questions affect a lot about how you draw, and most people just have not analyzed it at all. Um, in general, there is a greater amount of form to the face than most 
artists realize. What kind of pencil is that? This is just a 0.5 HB mechanical. Only the lead matters with a mechanical pencil, of course, with any pencil, really. The body is just preference. Do you like a heavier one, a lighter one? I like a heavy one. Do you know an artist called Von Art? I think you dig his stuff. I, that name sounds very familiar. So yes, I'm sure I've seen Von Art's stuff. I, I can never remember people's work based off their names. I always have to see the work again. But that name sounds very familiar. It must have left an impression if the name sounds familiar because usually the names don't resonate at all. And then I'll look at the person's work and I'll be like, um, Oh, I've looked at hundreds of this person's pictures. <laughs> Have you tried smooth newsprint with charcoal? Yeah, in school. I'm in love with it. I don't know how anyone cannot be instantly swore their undying loyalty to this combo. It is a great classic combo for uh, figure drawing and life drawing, especially. Um, I can't swear myself to charcoal because it's so impermanent, you know? It's very, very flimsy. It swims around everywhere. You can't lock it in place until you fix it. And newsprint is a very weak surface. It doesn't stand up to abuse. It's very difficult to finish a picture on, especially if you like to explore like I do. I like to beat a picture up a lot. You know, a lot of the pencil drawings that you've seen from me. Oh yeah, I wanna make his, can I make his head have like a weird protrusion? That could be weird. All of my like pencil drawings that people mostly know me for. Um, so if you go to like stevenzapata.com, those like finished pencil drawings that I have up there on my public spread. Um, all of those, a lot of other artists would have transferred those drawings. Um, that is to say they would have done them digitally or printed out a reproduction or used a projector and so they would have had a separate plan and then they would have traced the plan onto the final paper and then just rendered from there. Um, I don't like working like that. I like, um, I like having, I like doing, if it's not the sketch, even if I have a plan, even if I have a very tight plan, I almost always re-sketch the drawing on the paper where I'm gonna finish it because I love the initial sketch energy. And I think that having the searching lines underneath adds something really special to the drawing that you can't fake, even if you render it like crazy. Um, and that has just always really been important to me. I don't like when the drawings are just, like I said, clean lines that get rendered. Um, if you watch my Harpy video on Proco. I talk about this in more detail and you can see me do the initial sketch lines on something that I push all the way to finish. And for me, why am I talking about this? To say, for me to be able to do that, I need excellent thick paper for my process because I need to be able to explore, erase, redo, take it really far. Uh, so, you know, something like newsprint is just going to 
resist that. It's gonna tear. It's just not a finishing medium. But yeah, it's one of the best for just sketching, no doubt. What is this thing about chair squats? I've seen a, chair squats mentioned a lot in the chat. And I'm pretty sure you guys are just being annoying, trolling me. Is it raining? Hmm. It is. How nice. Have you tried Scratchboard after seeing what Evan Cagle and Nick Delort achieve with it? I'm dying to give it a shot myself. Uh, I have tried it. Their work is awesome. Um, I have tried it, but it's not for me. I should, I should say, I could be wrong. I don't know about Evan Cagle. I haven't looked into his process more specifically, but um, I don't think Nico's is um, scratchboard. I mean, they're both definitely going for the look, but last time I saw Nico's process, um, he is, um, he's working positively with ink, not subtractively with the scratch board, but he does nail the look. But I think those are all inked lines and he uses different ink types that he then evens out in post. Um, and he uses white, I think he uses like white markers and white out to fix things. Actually, I think he works in ink, but he's working on clay board and when there's a mistake, he scratches the ink out into the clay board. So unlike scratch board where it's black and you're scratching out white, if I remember correctly, Nico is working on white clay board, adding ink and then scratching, scratching out to white for corrections. He might've changed his process since then though. Maybe he did go to real, to classic. Um, Scratch board, black scratch board. What is your stream title mean on AI part? That is in reference to, um, I was talking about this earlier in the stream, but that is in reference to, um, in my video, the end of art, I have a section in there where I point out like, cause one of the big arguments was just use open, open source models. Uh, well, there's a lot of arguments that tie into the open source models. And I said in that video, the open source models will not be open for long. Once they see how much money is on there, they will pull the rug out from under people and they will start charging and making them not open. And uh, Ahmad Mustaki recently announced that that is the way stability is going they're going to start charging for commercial use licenses. By the way, they don't have the ability to do that. I mean, that is, that's not like, that's them saying they want to sue you if you use it for commercial purposes without paying them. That's what's fucked up because on a legal level, they do not have the power or the, the authority to say that it's okay to use an AI model for commercial purposes. That has not been worked out in the courts yet at all. So. Um, that's a between you, that's a between the stability consumer and stability thing, not a, um, like a legal thing that like, oh, now it's totally okay everywhere to use it for commercial purposes. Um, so that's interesting, but, um, yeah, they they want to be able to sue you if you use it for commercial purposes without paying them. 
um, and they're going to start charging for subscriptions for the models. And if you make a certain amount of revenue, um, which they haven't announced the numbers for that off of their models, they're going to take a cut, kind of like the Unity game engine system. It was easy to see coming if you were paying attention. What is the most average day in Steven's life about amount of quality drawing hours? Uh, I try to cap it at four, and I don't beat up on myself if I do less. I always try to stop when I'm excited. When I know exactly what I would do next, and I'm excited to do it, that's always a perfect time for me to quit for the day. I'd like to take that energy into the next day rather than just pushing through until I'm tired. And yeah, when I hit four hours, uh, as much as is possible, I try to, no matter how excited I am, I stop. Close Photoshop, do something else. There's plenty of other things to do. Gotta make dinner, get exercise, pet my dog, read books. I'm in full sustainable for the marathon mode. That's my, that's what I focus on. My goal is to still be drawing when I'm 90 and I base my decisions on that. I take it very, very seriously that life is basically always trying to find a way to keep you from drawing. That's the way our culture is right now. It's just like, it doesn't incentivize it. It's always like there's something better you could be doing, something more interesting, something more financially viable, something with a faster dopamine hit. There is, if you look at it from our current society's perspective, there's very few good reasons to stay at the drawing board hour after hour after hour after hour. Um, that is my number one priority. That's what I base everything on now. I, what do I need to do? How do I need to manage my brain, my incentives, my livelihood, my business, so that when I'm 90, I'm still drawing? So yeah, all that to say, I cut it off at four hours. Now, I didn't used to always do that. You know, we go, I think it's a good idea for anybody at any stage, but um, at other points in my life, you know, I was stupid and young and I would push myself to, I was barely paying attention. I was just like, I need to see eight hours on the clock. And when I say clock, I mean this clock, not your fake mental clock, not the clock on the wall, a stopwatch that is on your desk, that when you sit down to draw, you've got a big stupid start stop button and it tells you the real amount of time that you've been working on something. It's the number one piece of advice I give people who are new to drawing, who are trying to take it seriously. Get one of these. Don't use your watch. Don't use a tab in your browser. You'll forget it's there. You'll forget to turn it off, turn it off. You start drawing, you turn it, well, you start drawing, you turn it on. You need to go take a piss. You need to go eat. You need to do something like that. You turn it off. Don't get obsessed with the number, but get real data about how long you're actually drawing. This is the most brutal education you'll ever find. How long have I been doing this? I've been using this for like 15 years now. I sat down to stream, I still turned it the hell on. I take it very, very seriously. Um, you need this. I mean, it, you, you, it will teach you so many things. The first thing that it will teach you is that when you are exhausted, when you're like, this isn't going right, this drawing sucks, I'm tired, you know, I, I did my best, but uh, it's just not working out, today's not the day. You'll look at the clock and how long have you been drawing? Less than 10 minutes. You will be mortified by how quick you are to give up. For the record, I don't trust a drawing unless I've spent an hour on it. Before I've spent an hour on a drawing, I'm like, I don't even care about it. I, I, to the level of like, what do I mean by I don't care about it? I'm not interested in my assessment of if a drawing is good or bad until I've been working on it for an hour. Underneath an hour, I'm psychotic. I have no idea. I'm in a total time warp. I don't know how long I've been working. I'm blending my emotions and stuff like that with the drawing. I can't evaluate the sketch, the finish, anything. I'm totally useless on evaluating a drawing less than an hour. And I live by that. 
And that gives me freedom to just sketch and I don't worry, you know, it's not going well, who cares? It's under an hour, I have no idea what it is. If I feel like it's going great, I don't get married to it. And I don't get upset if after an hour I'm like, this drawing sucks, who cares? You didn't know, you were crazy. I don't trust a drawing until I've been working on it an hour. You need one of these if you're trying to schedule your life around drawing. I haven't given my props to the stopwatch in a long time, so. Just felt the need to fit that in. Also, if you, once you're actually working, you really need one of those to actually chart. If you're working hourly, um, like I was for most of my career, you need to, you need one of those to actually know what the hell you're charging for. <laughs> Otherwise you go through what so many artists go through where you're sitting there trying to bill and you're like, what? The clock says that I was working for eight hours, but I feel like I only did an hour of work on this. Oh, well, you know, I better split the difference and lie about how long I worked. And, you know, I'll only charge them for two hours because that's kind of what the amount of work feels like, even though I spent all day on it. It's like all of that is avoided if you keep a stopwatch on your desk. You'll, you'll work better, you'll focus more, and you'll bill accurately. <laughs> And billing accurately is important because, again, you're not going to be in it for the marathon if you start lying, doing the classic insecure person thing where you're cutting your hours, saying you worked for less time than you really did. You're just exhausting yourself, not making enough money. You'll never negotiate. You'll never charge higher rates. It sucks. It sucks. You got to avoid that. I see people mentioning they draw 10 hours a day, LOL. And I'm like, were you really? How much of the time you were scrolling the reference folder or Pinterest or just looking at what to do next? Yeah, everybody who flounce numbers like that, 99% of them are totally deluded. They have no idea. It's like, and it's just so myopic. It's like, if you're drawing 10 hours a day, you're probably doing 20 minutes worth of work because you're so tired and burnt out and completely creatively vacuous and you haven't seen the sun and you haven't been inspired by other people's art. You haven't been inspired by your friends and the experiences that they are having. You're just like, you would be a much better artist and be happier if you drop the number to 75% of your capacity and lived a normal life. It's like, how useful is 10 hours of thoughtlessly waiting for the clock time to tick up? It's like, you're not even focusing. I've been there. I'm speaking from experience. I lost many a year doing that. We teach best what we most need to learn.
I gotta go to the restroom. I'll be right back. Come in. Oh, hello, Joseph, is it? Hi, Dr. Zapata. Yes, Joseph, Joe. How are you? I'm well. What seems to be the problem, Joe? Well, I'm having trouble, uh, difficulty drawing from imagination. Oh, Joseph, just so you know, that's totally normal. Why don't you tell me a little more about your problem? Is it that you can only draw from imagination if you're completely alone? Doc, I can't ever draw from imagination. What about if you're completely relaxed? When I'm totally relaxed, I can't imagine a thing. I see. Uh, Joseph, it's important to know that even with severe cases like this, there's always hope. I can prescribe an experimental therapy called Form from Imagination. Form from Imagination? Mm -hmm. It's early days, but clinical trials are extremely promising. Why don't you try this for six months and then check back in with me? Hmm? Okay, I'll do whatever it takes. Did you just draw this? Oh yeah. Wow, it's, it's amazing. I, hey, Doc, uh, do you ever have trouble drawing from imagination? Oh no, no. <laughs> you wouldn't, I mean, you should do this. That's right. Wow. Born from imagination is an experimental therapy and is not yet approved for use by the FDA. Do not use form from imagination if you are already taking any prescriptions for drawing from reference, working sight size, or tracing photos you didn't even take. Stop taking form from imagination if you experience any of these side effects, loss of interest in your personal projects, megalomaniacal self-confidence, hallucinations, unless they're the kind you're hoping for, drawing better than Steven Zapata, or feelings that purchasing the course was enough and you don't really need to do the exercises. Call your doctor if you have stiff gestures, flat forms, or boring ideas to address a possible life-threatening condition. Full sketchbooks have been reported with form from imagination and medicines like it. Other risks include long-term art careers, too many clients, and being worth more than you're charging for. Call your doctor today and ask about form from imagination. Do 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 ba da da be da ba da ba da ba ba. Goodbye, Chet. Thank you for being here. And I want to draw something new. Is it one of the best spoofs he does, the production quality? Many thanks to my friend Joe for acting. Many thanks to my dear friend Omar for doing the cinematography camera operation. Set dressing. Really being the production designer on the thing. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Ah, just a little bit of a zoom in. Just a little bit of seeing the, seeing the drawings a little bit more clearly. Just a little peek into clear drawing scene town. Yeah. Free doodlin, free doodlin, my choodlin. Let's just scribble around. Find some demons raking people over the coals.
It's a bird, man. Starting gym on side of art, if only three to four days a week because I get tired of drawing, but it's better than going zero days a week. Yeah. Basically. I mean, you got to avoid burnout, you know? And you got to uh, give yourself time to get reinterested in things. What grade of lead are you using? Wow. I can see so much more chat now because I uh, set my chat monitor up to be a uh, portrait format. It's nice. Um, stop the timer. He needs to poop. Um, ba -ba -ba. Have you seen that Napoleon movie? Not yet. Uh, we were thinking of going to see it for Thanksgiving and we didn't quite get around to it. You get the course, Joe. <laughs> You guys are very curious about what I'm doing in the bathroom. I can assure you, it's amazing. Do you think naming your children based on fictional characters should be punished by jail? God damn it. No. Leave people alone. Let them make up names if they want. Every name was made up at some point. I mean, I understand that a lot of people think coming up with a new name for your kid is cringe or something like that, but... Can't make cringe punishable by jail. Let people live their lives. It's between them and their kid. It's got nothing to do with you. It's certainly got nothing to do with the punitive justice system. If I had to name my kid off after a fictional character, I think I'd name them, you know, Kvoth is a really badass name and impossible to say. I mean, that's one that would ruin someone's life. Maybe I'd go Kvoth. Do you draw in the bathroom sketchbook? Um, I don't think I ever went that far. I definitely went through periods where I kept uh, emergency sketchbooks like in the car glove compartment and stuff like that, but don't think I ever had a bathroom sketchbook. Goodbye, Alexis. Radon for a son. <laughs> Stephen, have you ever considered renouncing drawing and pivoting directly into music? I have. Mostly at the urging of um, the CEOs of major, major record labels and stuff like that. But um, I've never pulled the trigger on it. 
I've had some very, I have to admit, very enticing offers on the table from like Universal Music Group and stuff like that, but I really love drawing. Yo, Steves, do you ever get tired of using any element of your drawings? What do you mean? Like subject matter wise? Like, don't you ever get tired of drawing spooky demons? Hey, Steven, love the artwork, but don't you ever get tired of drawing spooky demons? Ain't you ever considered doing like a portrait of my daughter that I could give her as a Christmas gift? Ain't you ever thought maybe you want to do that? I mean, I know you don't know my daughter or know me, or know that I have a daughter until now. But don't you ever want to do that instead? Instead of all these spooky demons? I mean, it's such a weird thing to draw. It's almost like you wouldn't draw it unless you like really liked it or had some sort of deeper motivation for drawing that stuff. So why don't you just switch to doing portraits of my daughter, you know? Or like my tattoo. You ever think of designing my tattoo? I was thinking of getting a tattoo of like the truck that I drive. My Ford F-150, like big, all the way across my back. Like it's coming right at you, like it's about to run you over. And you can kind of see my face through the windshield, kind of like mean mugging, like, mm-hmm, here I come. And on the bottom it says, fuck you. And then John 618. You ever think about that, Steve? You ever think about doing that? Hey, hey, why'd you close your door? I'm still out here. Hey, open up, I got more... I got more questions about your art. Don't you like talking about your art? Come over here.
How to differentiate between perfectionism and spending as much time as you need drawing. Um, I mean, perfectionism has like a, a deep flavor of like a lack of worth. If that's in there, then you know you're grappling with perfectionism. If you're just spending as much time as you need to on the work, then there's no like implication of worth in there. You're just like, this is just what the picture needs, you know? Best movies you've seen this year? Um, Oppenheimer was good. Did it have to come out this year or just things I've seen this year? Hmm. I gotta think on that. I'm sure there's something I really loved, but nothing's coming to mind right now. I always, I always think of it when I get off stream. I was like, oh, I should've said that. When did I see Phantom Thread? Did Phantom Thread come out this year? No, right? That was last year. I don't know. I feel like there weren't that many great movies this year, but maybe I just didn't see a lot. Hi, Stephen, what's new about AI predictions? Uh, that is in reference to um, Stability AI's CEO, Ahmad Mostaki, announcing that they're gonna start charging subscriptions for their products, one of them being Stable Diffusion, that they're gonna wanna cut if you make a certain amount of money and that you need a membership if you wanna use it for commercial purposes. laughably in his post, someone asked like, what's to stop us from, you know, getting the model weights and then unsubscribing before you find out? And he had the gall to say, I don't know, your conscience. It's like, <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Where was your conscience when you stole everybody's fucking work? Well, conscience only matters once it's your stuff on the line, right? These people are just abjectly hypocritical. And it's so predictable that it's barely interesting. <laughs> Gross, really gross. Whoa, Jay Decker gives me $20. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, <laughs> bro. Now we're talking, now that's some real cash. That's some real cash coming out of Jay Decker's pockets. <sighs> that's nice. Look, that's Jay Decker's first donation, it looks like. Hi, Steven, thanks for all your wisdom, which has been so helpful lately. Do you have any advice on how to handle smaller value shapes and really subtle tonal shifts within the larger ones without muddying the big picture? Um, the big thing is value compression. That's usually what fixes that. Um, the smaller a value change is, like, um, 
let's say I was gonna render the back of this demon. I'm not gonna commit any actual lighting here, but if the lighting was coming from the left, right, you would expect a main shadow shape, that is to say a form shadow, that's maybe somewhere in this area, right? And the light, you wanna really compress it. So the smaller value shapes, a back has a lot of little like bumps and divots on it, right? It's got all sorts of muscular insertions and all that. And the tendency is to do something called over modeling those, which is to say making them too high contrast. So you would punch holes in the drawing by sort of overreacting to every little muscle that's out there. And there's ways to make that work, but usually you blow the contrast when you do that. So the smaller a value shape is, and this, this, this is a general guide, right? Because the smaller value shape is usually the lighter it should be, the lower contrast it should be. And that will help compress the entire light shape, which tends to create the illusion of form better because that is actually the way light works out scientifically. There's a, not a linear fall off to values in the light. There is a, I forget if it's called a geometric or an exponential fall off, but I think it's geometric. There's a geometric fall off um, to shadows. So as the form turns a little bit, it barely changes value. And as the form gets closer and closer to the shadow, the value changes are much more severe, much more suddenly. So smaller value shapes, lighter, lower contrast when you model them. That is a rule of thumb, but remember that if something is supposed to be really dark, it should still be really dark. So let's say these weren't little value insertions, but this was a statue of a demon and there was a hole in the statue here. A hole has deep ambient occlusion in it, right? Because it's blocking the light. That should still be black. It's not gonna look like a hole if you keep the whole really low contrast just because you're trying to slavishly stick to this rule about compressing the light. If something needs to be dark, make it dark because the dark accents anchor the value scale of the picture. But that's simplifying a lot of things, but that is the basics of how to handle small value shapes and really subtle tonal shifts within larger um, tonal shapes. Um, you avoid muddying it by compressing it being very judicious about how you spread your contrast around. How to get past drawing feet, draw every single figure walking in blood. That's one way. That's one way. Or just make everybody wearing like cloaks and robes. Thanks again for the 20 bucks, Jay Decker. I really appreciate it. LS Demon says that's one New York coffee with tax. I try to be more judicious about my coffee choice, but I'm not gonna lie. I could name a few places near me where I could easily pay $20 for a cup of coffee. It'd be a big cup of coffee, but it wouldn't be that great a cup of coffee. <laughs> it would be $20. CC Vink says, you are a real gift, Stephen. Thank you for using your time this way. Same to you. Thank you for using the, your time this way. I really appreciate everybody being here. It means a lot to me. And if you're drawn 
while watching this. That's what it's all about, baby. Oh good, the yappy dog is in here with me. My in-law's dog, my pup, has taken off to more fruitful fields. That is to say, she is sleeping on my bed. Oh, right when I mentioned her, there she goes yapping. Easy doggy. Easy, you little Winnie Pup. Guys, I don't know why the scream, the, the scream, the stream crashed that first time, but we're two hours in. I hope this stream looks good, sounds good. My bit rate's holding. Computer's not freaking out. We're at 4K. I think this is going to work, folks. I really do. Kind of a shape could I do here? Cease thou yon dreary plain, seat of desolation, void of light, save that that the glimmering of these livid flames cast pale and dreadful. Tither yonder let us tend. Nine times the space that measures day and night to mortal men, he with his horrid crew lay vanquished, rolling in the fiery gulf, confounded though immortal. Round he throws his baleful eyes that witnessed huge affliction and dismay. A dungeon horrible on all sides round. Damn, you gonna render all that stuff? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Maybe if I'm feeling cute about it. I'm gonna do whatever I want, basically. In all seriousness, I think with a composition, if I were going to use this, something this complicated as a base, I'd redraw it a couple times at least before I commit to rendering it. You know, the, the more complex something gets, the more planning behooves you. But it's always worth it to just sketch and have fun with it. This is step one for any complicated drawing. Just feel it out.
Get the dog on cam, Steven. No, let them rest. Let them rest. Stream seems very stable. That's very good. The scream trashed. Yeah. It did dump out completely at the beginning and I had to restart the stream and I just don't have any idea why. Because my connection was good. My up and down speeds were great. Had to move the hell mouth to let that wing be clear. Travis says, I wish I could draw along to your streams, but I'm always at my day job, photo restoration, which is also imperiled by AI. Fortunately, my clientele are mostly boomers. <laughs> That's gotta help. Don't let them watch those news segments about AI. Now, computers can make art. You can use tools like Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion to ask for anything like a cute puppy wearing an astronaut suit. But not everybody's happy about it. Some artists think that this puts their jobs in danger. I spoke to one of them, an artist from New York City called Steven Zapata. Yeah, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Steven is an idiot. He has no idea how much I wanna make cute dogs in astronaut suits. But he ran his mouth for hours when I visited his studio one sunny Tuesday morning in New York City. Yeah, I mean, it took all of my friends' stuff and, you know, they mark it off of our names. They even put in their promotional materials. They say, like, try a prompt that says, like, Greg Rakowski. I couldn't get him to shut up. I tried to ask him to let me to install Stable Diffusion on his fancy computer, but he refused. He said that he felt ethically troubled by that idea. I took a shit in his bathroom before I left and I spit on the threshold of his home and cursed him onto the generations. This has been Timothy something something with CNN. I wonder if there's an alternate universe where AI is really just a tool, like AI-based color fill or AI cleaning up your lines. Well, if only. It'd have to be based on a very different kind of tech, I think. Do you think that emotionally resilient people can make meaningful art? Definitely, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Jay Decker says, hey Steven, thinking of buying your FFI course and was wondering how often long the feedback sessions are. Are you the one who provides the feedback? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, is that, is that not clear? Do people think it's not me doing the feedback? 
I would def I would say I would say that it's instructor feedback. I, I'm I'm the instructor. I'm the only instructor. I think I say in the Q and A too. Yeah, it's me doing the the feedback. If you look at the Q and A at the bottom of the page, yeah, it's me doing the feedback. Um, if that ever changed, I would definitely let you guys know. You know, if I got someone to help me or something like that. Um, how often are long the feedback sessions? There's, there's no sessions. It's not like a Zoom call we do. There's, um, let me just show you real quick. Let me move my stream stuff over. Let me see if I'm actually logged in to do this. So this is what the feedback area looks like. So this is a community that you get access to if you get the feedback version. Um, and my freaking mouse died again. What's wrong with this thing? And you post your work in here, and then this is where I give feedback. So it's not like call sessions or anything like that. I wouldn't really be able to get to everything um, if I did that, um, or at least the sessions would be extremely long, but yeah, it's async like this. You post your work, you give me a write-up about what you did. Um, and I take everything and I do notes and I do, you see that the, my mouse died again. What is wrong with this thing? I mean, I just, hmm. Very unusual. So yeah, I go in and I respond and I give feedback on the stuff, do edits, draw overs, things like that. That one's got a long write up. And uh, usually um, I give feedback within a week usually. You know, sometimes it's much faster than that. Sometimes I'm getting to people day after, two days after, three days after. The average is about, I get there five-ish days and I rarely go over a week to give feedback on something someone posted. Some people pool their assignments and then they post them all at once, like a group of 10. That's gonna take me longer, then I split it up. So if you do that, you should expect that it'll take me longer to give feedback. But if you're posting as you go, yeah, I do them in about uh, under a week each. Isn't the wreck crazy in New York? Yeah, it's New York. I, I think we got surpassed by LA and I think a city in Texas recently, but um, LA, San Francisco, some Texas city, but New York's up there. It's just one of the most expensive places. Rathchild says, to be fair, they can be tools. Scott Robertson has been posting stuff where he trained an AI in his own style and used it to render his sketches to save time. Every fine, what that is, is a fine tuning model and all fine tuning models are, as far as we know, there's people who claim otherwise, but they don't provide documentation. Um, every fine tuned model relies on stable diffusion. So it is supporting and reliant upon an unethical product. Um, it doesn't matter, I mean, the, the, the usage case doesn't really matter. It's like the, the fine tuning is still based on stable diffusion. There's nobody alive right now, no individual artist working right now 
has the money, the computing power, or the amount of pieces necessary to train an AI, a usable AI for this kind of stuff, um, from scratch on their own work. I mean, you need millions of data points to make it work. You need hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of compute time, and you need hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of hardware to train a current, uh, a current technologic, a current paradigm text to image model from scratch. No artist can do that. Um, only companies can do that. All the fine tuned models out there are based on stable diffusion. It doesn't mean it's not getting closer to the tool use case, but it's still a serious problem. Is this work pandemonium related or just for scribbles? Yeah, it's def I, I would say it is pandemonium related. I mean, it's just, it did start as a scribble. I just wanted to draw something, but so often when I just sit down to draw, it'll become stuff like this. Demons in hell. So, you know, I'm sort of unconsciously on theme when I do stuff like this. Yeah, for anybody who has maybe been wondering that, um, it is me doing the feedback in the Inform for Imagination. It takes up a huge amount of time. <laughs> it's a big part of my day-to-day -day now. I've done, I tried to count it the other day, looking through my folder where I save all of them. Um, I've done multiple hundreds, uh, probably in the 600-ish range over the past year and a half. It's hard to count. It's somewhere between, I would say, probably 400 and 600. Rent and pandemonium making it attractive to older Gen Z with hearts set on the big city without New York City or LA funding. Yeah! Steven, for people doing FFI, both traditionally and digitally, do you recommend posting a, posting a both for a particular assignment at the same time or the other after receiving feedback for the first? Um, the people who have done You know, a, a bunch of people post both, um, and I'm all right with that. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't mind giving um, notes on one or the other. I tend to wind up focusing on one more than the other, but I, if something's wrong with either of them, um, I will definitely say what seems to be wrong. Um, it really just comes down to, here's my worry, right? Like. And the digital people have this, and sometimes people make this mistake with traditional, is that they, they focus too much on volume, and that's not actually the point of the course. I, like when I, in, the, in the way that I generally talk about the assignments and what I'm asking for in the assignment book, I'm not looking for a bunch of cubes, for example. I need one perfect cube, right? So um, the digital, modulations of the assignment 
you know, they try to keep the numbers relatively low, you know, instead of one cube, uh, have you practice. I forget if it's three or six for the cube. But um, the idea is that they should be fast enough that you can nail all three cubes, right? And for traditional, I don't, I really don't wanna see a bunch of cubes for traditional. That's not the actual learning outcomes for a course like Form for Imagination. If you need to do multiple attempts for you, that's perfectly fine, right? And you can post your multiple attempts to guide me through what went wrong or to give me an idea of that. But you need to elevate one to say, this is the best cube I can possibly do at this level. That's the kind of stuff we're trying to crit in something like Form for Imagination. Like, I'm not trying to crit you being fast or cursory or giving it 50%. I need you to operate at the edge of your ability so that I can explain to you what is keeping you from being able to finish things and make things look like form, make things look convincing, look real. So that that's my only major concern for how people submit assignments. It's like, as long as you're giving me something like that I can really sink my teeth into, then traditional, digital, I don't mind. If you're focusing too much on volume and you do like 15 digital ones and then five traditional ones, that's confusing and kind of makes it a little difficult to crit, you know? This looks good. Thank you, Mustafa. Hey, Steven, any advice for art school students? Just draw a lot. <laughs> I mean, I don't, it, it would depend on what art school you're going to. I can't really give um, blanket advice there. There's a huge spread in quality to art schools. Most of them are so bad that I would basically say, prioritize for the really, really bad ones, you should basically prioritize what you're doing outside of school more, educate yourself way more, cut corners on your schoolwork because it's irrelevant and poorly taught. And just you're at that point, you're going to school to make friends and make connections. Because even at a bad school, some of your friends are going to wind up getting their foot in the door. If you work really hard, you might be the one who gets your foot in the door and then you're gonna bring your friends with you or they're gonna bring their friends with you. So there's, I hate to say it, it sounds mean or something like that, but there's definitely a lot of art schools out there that you're, you're really only there to make friends. Not all of them are like that, right? If you're at a really high-end art school, pay attention to your classwork because it's carefully structured and taught well. Um, but for, you've got to identify what the hell kind of school you're at. And yeah, I totally think it's viable too. If you know you're at a bad one, don't do, basically don't give a shit about your coursework. I mean, do whatever you need to appease mom and dad, right? To get your degree, if that's important for you or something like that, to not come off like an asshole, right? But really identify the minimum level and focus on educating yourself on the side because a huge amount of time is wasted at shitty art schools. Huge. What do you think a person should do to get the most out of your course? Like I said, just give it your all on, to, what I find most people who don't go to art school and don't have like any guidance, they, the big breakthrough for them is they need to learn to stop 
spreading themselves thin and going for volume just to make number go up, right? And they need to learn how to actually commit to a drawing and do the absolute best that they can on one, just one. Go all the way, you know? That's the big breakthrough for most people who are doing self-learning. If you're at school and stuff like that, you sort of naturally learn that because they have hard limits on you. They force you to submit assignments at a certain time, but um, you don't have that if you're learning on your own and it's one of the big things that holds people back. And that's why so many people, because it's not natural to do that for a lot of people, that's how they get stuck in the skill trap. They find the only satisfaction they can get from art is being able to end the day saying, I put eight hours in the clock. I put eight hours on the clock and I did a thousand drawings. And then if you ask them, did you give a shit about anything that you're doing? Did you finish any of them? Are any of them creative? Nothing. And they'll go 10 years like that. And they'll get really good at not giving a shit about their work and not having it be emotionally connected. And they'll get really good, really good at not finishing anything. And then it'll take about five years of tears to reprogram the bad habits inculcated in that process. Is thinking, oh, that looks kind of cool, the same as emotionally connecting to the work? No, but what you think looks cool is a little guidepost towards connecting with the work. It's like there is data there that you think something looks cool, but no. It's not, it's not enough to mean that you're emotionally invested. And you will need to be in the long run because the art journey is very hard. Eli with the $5 for the puppy treat fund. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And Fanny will appreciate it too. And so will Winnie. I think with your particular $5, Eli, I will have to buy a premium dog treat that I will gingerly split between the two dogs. And I will say, all right, do your tricks. I like to make them do their tricks at the same time. And sometimes their spins and their sit pretties sync up and it's very cute. And then I will give them each a half. That's what I think I will do with your $5, Eli. Thank you so much for the donation. You're very kind. I think you can't be emotionally involved in each drawing though, way too exhaustive. Uh, well, e even, if it, even if it's not exhausting, though it can be. Um, I agree, maybe you can't do, um, maybe you can't be emotionally invested in all of them, 
But the thing is you need to be able to be emotionally invested in them. A lot of people, especially in the intermediate stage, they, you couldn't get them to be emotionally invested if you tried. They didn't practice it. They never built the habit. They're, they're doing stuff they barely care about, hoping that, basically just hoping for external validation. They're just like, I'm doing stuff I barely care about so that hopefully other people will like it. And that is the flimsiest, weakest, ready to be utterly dismantled by the first hard time in life motivation to make art possible. You know, it'll get you through while the going's good, while it doesn't matter, but when things get tough, that's never enough for people. So yeah, it may not be every picture. I'm not saying for every picture, but a lot of artists are not capable of doing it for even one, and that's a problem. Mary Beth says, would you say your course is great for intermediate professional artists or is it aimed at beginners or everyone? It's for anybody who um, feels they need to understand form better. Whether they're a beginner, advanced, I don't really know. You know, I'd need to, it's very difficult to make that assessment without seeing people's individual work. Um, but you know, I, th I think at a certain point, you know, you know, you, you realize I, it, it, it's a particular part of art, and I think you'll know if you've got an issue with it. You know, you, you know, like I, I, there's, my form's not quite there, and I wanna be able to invent things, to do it from my head, or included in that is heavily modify a reference and still have the form hold together. It's like, if you feel you have problems there, that's who it's for. You know, cause you can, you can become an intermediate or even an advanced professional artist, an artist so broad that there's plenty of high level artists who they've just never thought about form. You know, they've been running on color forever or things like that, or you do more graphic work and things like that. Um, it's totally possible to get to any level without ever having grappled with this particular fundamental. And that goes for all the fundamentals, you know? How do you help people who are still stuck on proving themselves and grinding art? This is the only way I've found to help, talking about it. Sometimes I say just the right thing and I can snap them out of it. Besides that, I really don't know what to do. It's different if, I, if we were in like a teaching relationship, you know, if I had them in a class and I could sort of, if I had authority to tell them what they're doing this week, that'd be different. But aside from that, um, you just gotta talk about it.
Is that a pencil? You betcha. I'm emotionally attached to my anime waifu drawings. That's good. Giant Penguin says, true. Haven't drawn a thing I care about in ages now that I think about it. See? That is an issue. That is an issue. Stream is perfect. That's good. We will continue to test. I don't know why I crashed earlier. I wonder if it's because I started at a slightly higher bit rate. I started at 25. When I came back, I put it at 20. It's been good. I have way more overhead than that though, so I don't know. Next stream, we'll test again. I'll put it back up to 25, see if it produces the same result. Or maybe I'll test private or something like that. But I don't know, when I was, to, I didn't have anything, I did run a couple private tests and I didn't have anything go wrong there. I just let it run for a while. We'll see, bear with me everyone. It's a new setup, so next few streams there'll have to be some experimentation going on. We know the traditional setup works. Maybe we'll test the digital setup next stream. And next stream will be on Monday because uh, I am away for the weekend visiting a friend. I don't know why I said that because I normally don't stream on the weekend anyway. So no one was expecting. Tuvieja says, do you plan to draw more feminine monsters sometime? Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like all your monsters are very masculine. They are. I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I get enough of the divine feminine in my day-to-day -day life. Art is where I manifest the masculine. <laughs> if I ever get a Ford F-150, then you'll probably start seeing me drawing girls. Need to balance things out. Anyone watching a stream in 2023 should know to expect and be patient with new setup growing pains. Uh, I hope so. I am very happy with the feel of the traditional streams again though. We'll see how it does digital. I've run digital tests too. 
I'm basically just looking for more hiccups like what happened earlier where it just dumps out completely because the tests I ran on my own, both local recording and letting stream run on private for a while, everything was all good, real nice and smooth. So it should be fine, but for some reason, it's, it's, it's only when you go, it's only when it's the real thing, when you're actually live, I guess, must be, you know, I don't know, must be a, a, you you know, it brings in more like YouTube's demands on their side, like how many people they have to serve it to, handling chat. Once those factors get thrown in that you can really only check out um, when you're actually live doing it for real, I think that's when the real problems arise. You know, you can't really test run those. You just got to really experience them. Favorite paper, Strathmore 400 series, bristle paper smooth. It's my favorite, I like smooth paper. It comes down to your preference. People tend to like either smooth or rough paper. So you gotta experiment with what you like. All right, everybody, I'm gonna start wrapping up because the uh, stream has been good for, it looks like two hours, 40 minutes. And if we include the stream that dumped out, I've been going for about three, so I am getting very hungry. I need a little break. So I'll be on for a couple more minutes, so if anyone has any last minute questions, we drew a couple things today while dealing with, whoops, I skipped a page. We drew those guys, we drew these guys, mostly tech support. But damn, I'm hungry. I gotta go eat something. It's an hour and a half past my lunch time. Thanks everybody for being here. Like I said, next stream will be Monday. And uh, I should say again, the Black Friday sale for my course has been extended to December 4th. You can get 10% off any version using code 23FRY at checkout. So if you've ever been curious, please investigate. Thank you, Boxer Wing. Hi, Steven, I have a question. You think your course helps for people who wanna make comics? Uh, I think the art form of comics is different enough that like, it's not gonna help you make comics, um, not in comic craft. If you know your comics are gonna have a sig like deal with form, like are you thinking of making a comic that has like really realistic looking things or stuff like that, or a lot of shading and rendering and things like that, then yeah, it'll help with that because it'll help with all shading and rendering. But um, no, I wouldn't say it would help with comic craft in any way. Can you talk a bit about what's on your mind when you are sketching stuff like this? Uh, this, to this level, there's, there's not any specific technique stuff in my mind. Um, fortunately, at this point, after many, many years of drawing, I'm just having fun. I'm just, I'm just enjoying moment to moment the experience of wiggling my fingers. I really like doing this. I don't know why. Just enjoying the moment to moment experience of wiggling my fingers and seeing things emerge. And I don't, it's like, this just isn't serious. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm in my sketchbook. I don't know what this drawing is gonna be. Like I said earlier, I don't trust a drawing until I've been working on it for an hour. So I'm just not worried about it. It could be bad, it could be good, it could make no sense. It could be all messed up, bad form, bad perspective, stuff like that. I don't care. I just draw for this kind of thing. If Usually there's a moment in a sketch like this, if it's gonna go somewhere, there's a moment where something clicks. There's some particular arrangement of a form or of the composition where suddenly I'm like, that's worth something. There's something there. 
Um, and then that will turn this into what I think of as an access drawing, like the, the full, happy, going for it drawing that reveals that there is something worth taking farther in it. And if that happens, I usually don't finish it in this drawing. I take that thing that clicked and I redo a whole, usually a very different composition around that thing. And I'll, you know, that just has a different planning process. I'll do that, whatever I need to do. I'll shoot references, I'll look for photos, I'll do a bunch of thumbnails, I'll do a digital, I'll do a traditional, I'll sculpt things, uh, whatever I need to do. That's when it just becomes a full traditional, like this is one of my finished pictures, you know? But for this, I don't, I don't even have those expectations on it. I'm just letting whatever happens happen. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. Goodbye to Gablinks, Saman Kuchar, Trashing Ken, Autumn Rose, Charlie, Angel, Frankie, Mangan, Maribeth, Manda, Colin Gallagher, Mustafa Ahmed, Marceline, Jeremy Gordon, Sorrow, Travis, Naus, Rappy, Terrace, Wynn, Squimbly, Beharano Art, Cursed Fetus, Boxer Ring 1970, Goro Bard, Wufu, and who could forget? Stratus Nixon, Chady on Fire, and Rob, and Owen Wellens, and Wufu. Who could forget them? Matej says the family doggo passed away yesterday. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. I was just thinking about that happening to my dog last night. I was almost in tears walking my dog before bed last night thinking, what am I going to do? And you, oh, that's horrible. It hurts. It hurts so bad. And I've been trying to keep myself occupied with drawing and stream in the background. Rewatched the last stream as well since it made me laugh so much. Thank you for the streams. I'm glad. Happy to help, Matej. My heart goes out for you, to you. It's... We love our pets, man. It's a little tragedy whenever they go. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I hope you feel better soon. Keep drawing. Keep drawing. Drawing makes, it, makes things better. It really does. It really does. Things, poof, you know. The things that are troubling you tend to slip away. Maybe not the whole time, but for periods there, you can find a gap where you realize kind of, oh, you know, I don't, I don't have to feel bad the whole time. You know? All right, everybody. Have a great day. Have a good weekend. Happy drawing if you're drawing. And thank you so much for being here. And uh, I will see you all soon. Thank you so much.